to get myself comfortable here. Let's uh, let's talk about the journey then. So um, I started by uh, a taxi to um, Leeds. Now the original idea was that I was going to go much earlier. Uh, I was going to go, in fact, by bus uh, into. Uh, Harrogate, uh, get a um, the last train from Harrogate to Leeds and wait in Leeds train station for a couple of hours uh, because that was the cheapest way of doing things but we changed our mind uh, and we decided to just go in the early hours of the morning by taxi so my taxi was booked for one o'clock now I did have 12 hours sleep before this journey, but I had already been awake 12 hours by that point and perhaps that was a mistake, perhaps I should have slept uh, during the afternoon instead of the morning. I'd still had 12 hours sleep though, so anyway. So I was on 13 hours awake by the time the, uh, the trip started and I wonder if that contributed in some way to uh, how tired and how difficult the journey was. The journey was not a good one, I'm afraid. Uh, the taxi was so fine. Anyway, we had a, a good trip to Leeds. Uh, and I got out at the train station, paid him the agreed price, which was good. I, I had been in to book that so that I knew exactly how much uh, it would cost because the last thing I wanted was it, it to be on the clock or anything like that so it was, a, it was a fixed agreed price which he held to so that was good now when I got to Leeds sta uh, train station the first thing that struck me was how different it was on, any, uh, on a night to the last time I went when it was absolutely silent uh, and you had to wait outside the station for a rail replacement service if you were going anywhere in the early hours of the morning. Now it's different. Uh, the uh, train station had always been open all night, but um, this was like, uh, you know, gone were the days of the uh, rail replacement services. You went in and the boards were still giving the information of the times of the trains when they were leaving and the, the platforms and stuff like that. and. Uh, you um, already had your tickets uh, but the ticket barrier of course uh, was the major obstacle between you know yourself and the trains and you couldn't wait on the train platform until 10 minutes before the train departed that was when the the ticket barriers uh, worked actually the ticket barriers were manned uh, so there was no problem in the end but my my worry was how do I know where the platform is once I'm through the uh, once I'm through the uh, ticket barrier now I had booked seats on uh, the train this was the sort of uh, booking where if I have my I do have my thing you actually had two tickets you had a ticket that was your train ticket and it was only valid with your uh, seat details so my seat uh, was coach B29 well there were three coaches and uh, the first one was first class the second one was one and the third one was two so I assumed it was two uh, for B got on to find that very few people use the train at that time in the morning and so they don't bother with the reservations so I just sat uh, with my luggage because I couldn't fit my luggage in the little luggage area and I didn't want it sort of falling around uh, during the travel. Uh, our travel was a Trans Pennine uh, Express which I've used before and when it gets to Manchester it then sort of diverts to wherever it's going so I used to get the one that went to Liverpool but this one was going direct to Manchester Airport after it got into yeah. Manchester itself. The trouble with the trip, or, the, or should I say the first hurdle, was when we got to Manchester. 
it's a relatively short ride between Manchester and Manchester Airport, but that was a ride that I hadn't done. And at Manchester, we had a, an absolute nutter get on board the train, and he was the sort of nutter that was sitting in the corner, uh, sort of talking, rambling, shouting to himself. Uh, it was awkward. It made the journey awkward because everybody in the whole carriage was a little bit unnerved by it. Uh, you know, it was a sort of situation where you don't make eye contact. Obviously he was out of his head on something and I was just hoping that he would never, you know, that when we got to the airport he would be going somewhere else and not actually into the airport uh, because there is no way in hell that they would let him fly or, you know, anything like that. So anyway, once I got to the airport, the uh, the train station brings you to the um, the gates of the airport basically, and I was looking on the screen because they have a big screen downstairs before you actually go into the airport. It's like the sort of lobby area between the airport and the train station, and uh, it's has a board with most of the flights that are coming on and because I was there so early uh, my train left at about half two so we were there by four and I wasn't due to leave until eight uh, and I always do that I always want plenty of time to get through customs and to you know sit in the duty free area for an hour or two that's fine uh, but it did mean that when I was looking at this board it wasn't yet bringing up the flights that were anywhere near the time of my departure. Uh, so I thought, well, you know, what do I do? Do I go in or do I wait here for an hour? There were no seats there, so I thought, well, I'll have to go in. So I went in, and when you're inside, you're in a... Uh, how do I put this? It's like raised walkways, so you must be, I don't know, 10 feet off the ground, and... Uh, there are three terminals all connected by these these walkways and uh, when you when you come in it actually gives you a big board and it tells you uh, which uh, which flights are leaving from where in terms of the airlines that are piloting them and this was the main mistake the main mistake is that I was because I was going by Dublin and not direct to the US the British side of the uh, uh, this flight were doing everything from Aer Lingus which was the operator however on all my tickets and on all my information I was given a, a number which was UA161 or something like that which was United Airways and when I got to this part of the uh, uh, to, to find which terminal I needed to go uh, it said flights that are operated by United Airlines are from one terminal and flights that are op operated by uh, Aer Lingus are from another terminal so I thought, well, how do I know which one to go? Of course, there's no one to no one to ask. So I thought, well, I'll go to the uh, United Airlines, uh, the terminal that serves United Airlines first. So off I went, uh, and bear in mind that it's a good ten minute walk from air, from this this point to any of the terminals. Got there, and they had listed all the flights that were going past the flight. Uh, time which I was leaving and my flight wasn't there in fact my number wasn't there at all either nobody to ask there so I thought well perhaps I shall try uh, Aer Lingus instead because I have time to sort of walk between the terminals so it was 10 minutes back to the the uh, the exit to the train station and then a, a further 10 minutes to the next terminal and that terminal was even even more difficult because for this terminal you needed to be on two different levels you need to take a lift. The first lift took you to uh, um, terminal whatever, and it was uh, it was um, departures A. So 
I looked all the way through there and, and there was no air lingus, any, anything like that. So eventually I got back in the elevator and went to the same terminal but, but the B gates or whatever. Departures B or, you know, so there was two different areas of the building from this terminal. That was where I found A, uh, a gate for air lingus. It was the first one I found and of course it wasn't opening for another half an hour but I thought well I'm going to have to wait here because they will be able to tell me uh, where you know if if it's this gate and if it isn't this gate whether it's a flight that is operated by them or United so I sat down and waited no I didn't I stood because uh, there were no seats about um, it, really they need to put more seats in Dublin Airport, they do. 